You can always caught, count these days uh, on Bill Maher saying some pretty stupid stuff. Uh, on his Friday show, they had a conversation about the Tyree Nichols case, the video that dropped. Uh, he had former Congressman Tim Ryan on his show. Uh, and if you want to see how two white men react to this and how their commentary is utterly ridiculous, um, it's this. Watch this. Yes, Half Moon Bay and Monterey Park was the other one, right? <laughs> and, you know, th th these shootings happen. We go through these ri this ritual where then we wait for, the, for them to announce the race of the shooter. Like we're waiting for the Oscar nominations. <laughs> because that's, you know, somehow to a lot of people the most important thing. And I just thought it was very interesting that this week Asians were killed by Asians. Two Asian men who were, you know, 66 and 72. And then this week, we just got this video of the Memphis Five. A black man is brutally beaten in Memphis by five cops. They're all black. I guess what I'm asking is America's culture of violence, it does go deeper than race, right? And I think this monofocus we have on race is short-circuiting us trying to fix some of the realer problems. Would you agree? Well, definitely deeper concerns here, and, th and this is an opportunity for us to have that conversation. The conversation about mental health, the conversation about guns, the conversation about cops, the, the cops, and, and, oh, the stress, yeah. and the stress the stress co that cops are under. I'm not defending yes. these guys. Of course, this was a tragedy. They should be prosecuted, full extent of the law, the, the whole nine yards. But if we don't, at some level, realize that it's not a white cop or a Black cop, it's a cop who's under stress, who's underpaid. I had cops in my congressional district, Bill. They were getting paid $14 an hour. If you're learning guitar late in life. So, let, let me unpack this. Here's my problem with this. See, for Bill Maher, how his mind, oh, oh this preoccupation um, with race, um, Julian. It's a preoccupation. He wants to act like race doesn't matter. What he tries to offer up is that race is the only thing. No. The reason we talk about the race aspect, because it is real. The fact of the matter is, Race doesn't apply to everything, but it applies to a lot of things. Bill wants to act like, oh, this preoccupation with it, Asians killing Asians and uh, black cops killing somebody black. But Bill, if you look at the majority of the cases, what did the FBI director say? The greatest threat to America is white domestic terrorism. He, he didn't say, oh, terrorism in general. He said white domestic terrorism, not, not Muslim terrorism, not, not black terrorism, not, 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 not Latino illegal immigrant terrorism, white domestic terrorism. And, and, I, and, and I'm about to send Tim Ryan a text to tell him uh, my thoughts about his little comments there as well. And all, this, all, all the cops are stressed. The money, not, I don't give a damn how stressed you are. That ain't got nothing to do with you beating somebody's ass. Hello. You know, Roland, uh, first of all, Bill Maher needs to get over himself. He used to be funny, uh, politically correct, <laughs> among other things. Uh, current, that comment about, like the Academy Awards, that wasn't even funny. It was a throwaway comment that wasn't unworthy of coming out of anybody's mouth. But secondly... He ignored what we've talked about uh, much of this time we've been together, which is the whole issue of structural racism. Um, and when he talks about these Asian men killing each other, let's talk about the Half Moon Bay for, for, for just a minute. Half Moon Bay was about worker uh, oppression. This was a man who was making little or nothing and um, being asked to pay $100 for some piece of equipment they alleged that he had um, damaged. So, you know... These are people making damn near the minimum wage, 
and you want them to pay $100 for something that they may or may not have damaged. Yeah, he lost it and he killed people, but let's not, this is this was not about race. This was about predatory capitalism. Now, the other one, I, I'm not going get to get there, but there, there are some other issues there as well. But the bottom line with Bill Maher is that he's too glib for his own good. He was wrong with this Academy Award comment. He is obsessed with, uh, a, with his own anti-blackness, because if he was not anti-black, he would have been able to break this down and talk about structure and talk about police culture. And I don't give a dirt. If these people are so uh, so uh, stressed, then quit your job. Get another one. You know, take a leave of absence. And then the, the throwaway comment, some police officer are making 14 an hour. Where? If they're making 14 an hour, there's somebody cleaning that police headquarters making less than that. So I don't, I, you know... Well, Tim Bryan, you send him a tweet or whatever you go send him. Uh, meanwhile, Bill Maher, he, he's lost a whole lot of credibility for me, but he lost it some time ago. And I'm glad that you're monitoring this. It's really so very important for us to understand, you know, that these people, these people are anti-black. And so they the, could not the, accept reality. The, the thing here, Renita, and again, is why I wrote my book, White Fear, is the Bill Myers of the world. I don't want to hear that crap. He's libertarian, he's liberal, whatever. No, he is increasingly the angry white man talking about cancel culture. Uh, oh, everything's about race. It's because he wants to deny the reality of what we're dealing with. There are, if you look at most of these cases, it is white cops brutalizing black people. Why? Because most police departments are made up majority white cops. Memphis. Memphis is an aberration where 58% of the cops in Memphis are black. That ain't normal in a lot of cities. Bill Maher has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. That is a conversation of two white men who are completely loud and wrong about an experience that they have no experience with, and that is living as a black person in this country. For what he's saying, that it could be cop stress, well, then cops carry that same stress no matter what type of person they come in contact with. So explain to me, Bill, if you're so smart, why those cops who are carrying that stress are able to restrain themselves from beating the hell out of white people when they come in contact with them. Because they still are stressed when they come in contact with white people, but we don't see the same results. What we really should be talking about is the racial stress that black people have to live with. Because children are even having to live with racial stress. And researchers have pointed out that living with racial stress does contribute to shortening the lives of black people. It actually changes your DNA. I remember living with racial stress as early as 12 because I saw the beating of Rodney King. And what that said to me was this country will let anything, and I mean anything, happen to black people. And absolutely nothing will be done. It is one of the reasons why I included in my launch video when I ran for lieutenant governor of Georgia the beating of Rodney King because we're still dealing with those same problems. So at the end of the day, people like Bill Maher just want it to not be about race because they know that they are complicit in that. He does not have good ideas around how to deal with this. And like I said before, he and Tim are just two white men who are loud and wrong at the same damn time talking about something that they know absolutely nothing about. You know, in Congo, um, uh, Maher had a discussion on his podcast podcast with actor Brian Cranston about critical race theory. And Cranston, frankly, had to check him on this. I'm going to play, it's a 14-minute clip. I'm not going to play all of it. But it's, again, it's a perfect example of what you hear coming from him. And then what Amar will do is certain folks who he will have on who he knows are not going to push him on that. And y'all, keep in mind, I've done Bill Maher show one time, October 2014. Uh, again, killed, but Never been back. No doubt. We know why. Listen to this. That people just don't grow up overnight. Society no, doesn't. It does. More ratio. And but for God's sakes, it's time. It's 400 fucking years that we've dealt with this. Oh, and our country still has not taken responsibility or accountability for what for the history of the systemic racism that's in this country. What should we do more? Well, I mean, for, for one thing, uh, critical race theory, I think is essential to be teaching. It depends on what you mean by that. Well, I mean, I mean teaching how the race trade and, and racism is systemic in everything we've done, in, in government, in social uh, activities. Yes, it, it has been. I mean, it's, it's, it's embedded in it. It's like, for example, why the Second Amendment really 
really was, I mean, this is one person's theory, but I think it's the truth. The Second Amendment really has to do with, uh, in a country where you were keeping a, a hostile people in chains, Yeah, you needed guns uh, to, you know, you needed very loose reins on guns to keep, keep the lid on that. Yeah, so that, that has a lot to do with why other countries don't have like a second amendment, a second the, amendment the way we do. And we didn't have an organized army. We didn't have a an organized militia. So you had to you had to form one quickly and be able to get your arms quickly yeah. when we were being attacked. Exactly. So, but if you but critical race theory can mean it's I mean it's just one of these catch-all terms. If you mean we should honestly teach our past, of course. If you mean more what the uh, 1619 book says, which is that it's just the essence of America and that we are irredeemable. That's just wrong. It's yeah. not. I mean, okay. yeah, right. I, I, I agree with that. But even even teaching our past and being honest and owning up to who we are as a country in the history of most schools are doing that. I mean, I'm sure there are ones in Texas that are not. Look, in Florida, they're, they're they. So they again, uh, again, oh, you say one thing on Macongo, but oh no, we don't really need to be focused on that stuff. But then you go, but you that's on your podcast. But then when you go on your HBO show, it's a whole different view. Go ahead. Oh my goodness! Wow. Um, first of all, shout out to to, to Walter White. You know, I, I'm so glad Cranston was able to articulate some of this stuff because you're absolutely right. Bill Maher thought he was the smartest guy in the room and could kind of school him on some things. And, and Cranston came with some, some very correct points. And first of all, Bill Maher, this stuff is not being taught in school. And when we talk about this idea of critical race theory, we, we all know what we're talking about here. But people who, who don't who do not know, this is this is a theory, just like you have queer theory and feminist theory that, that came out of the 80s and in and, and, and Harvard Law School and other activists who are who are involved in this. And it is not about all history. It's about studying how America's policies affect different groups from a racial lens. And people use that as an umbrella to get rid of everything relating to black and brown history in our school. Now, getting back to Bill Maher and, and, and the police, we have to understand that when we're talking about these police and being tired and so on and so forth, Renita is absolutely on point. They seem to only be, quote unquote, tired and exhausted when they get to our community because they're not beating down other people at the same rate that they're doing what, what's happening in our community. And this idea about you know their stress, get another job. I believe that just as we get pulled over, if there's a car accident of some sort, we get a breathalyzer test, why aren't these officers being drug tested to see what kind of things that they're on when they're committing these types of acts? These guys are not committing these acts because of stress. They're committing these acts because of hate, and many of them yep. are wired to do this. I remember a teacher who once said she went down to the police department to check on her former students, and she thought that a lot of the students who were bullies in School, we're going to be the cops. You know what she said? The people who I saw became cops were the people who were bullied. Yep. And those were the people who put on that uniform I, so that they can get out there and exercise that power. Gotta go. And I, people need to understand that. All right, folks, back to that whole unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, you're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause to long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 